Welcome back to another video using the Target Scheduler plugin in Nina. In this one we're going to look at the Target Scheduler in operation and pick up on a few new features that have occurred since the last video. I first of all opened two instances of Nina. This turquoise one is my server instance and it's the first one that I load and I've loaded a sequence which has a startup section an exposure section and a shutdown section. The second instance of Nina, which I call my client, I've created this wine red color, which is a good reminder to break out a bottle in a moment. And again, it has a sequence with startup, exposure and shutdown, though its contents are quite different. The sequences are actually running at the moment and it's waiting for dusk to arrive, which will be in about an hour's time. And before that happens, I just want to show you a couple of things that have occurred since the last versions. If I look in the server instance, under the shutdown, remembering that the server does all the control of the exposures, I've introduced some new target scheduler instructions. The first is target scheduler flats. This is a flat instruction that in this particular case I've set up to take flat frames at the completion of a particular target. Now one of the things that you can do is set up how frequently it takes flat frames. For people with refractors they might want to do it every night. For people with refractors it may be just once for a project. The frequency at which the flat frames are taken are set up in the plugin. But before we do that, we need to just take a look at a further instruction that is used for flat frames. And that is one down here called Target Scheduler Immediate Flats. And that is a slightly revised instruction that will always take flats and basically is done when you need to take flat frames immediately after taking image exposures. So let's look at the plugin and look at the target management part of it and under my profile for my server I'm going to look at my LRGB project and you can see that there's a new setting here called flats handling and if I go into edit mode you can see the options so there's target completion which is what I've done so it basically when I reach the desired exposure count and it goes into this instruction it will take flat frames. Use with immediate only which means that it will only do the, recognize the other instruction and then these ones are a cadence so this is a number of days so after every one two three five etc or off. So I'm just going to leave it at target completion and cancel out of that and I'm going to take a look at what we do to set up the flat frames themselves. The flat frames are using the built-in abilities of Nina in so much that it uses the, the values established by the flat wizard for both the server and the client and those values that either are fixed exposures with varying degrees of intensity or changing intensity with fixed exposures are in the equipment tab under the flat so you can see that for each filter, again an offset setting that I'm using, I have an exposure time and a brightness level for my flat panel. And that's also true of my client version. Each of the flats is defined in the equipment tab and that was done by running the flat wizard before I started running the sequence. And that's important because this makes it effortless. It means you don't have to start getting involved. And in my case, the, the telescope is parking itself, pointing to the wall of the observatory, the roof shuts, and it takes its flat frames. It doesn't take flat darks, but you don't need to if you're using fixed exposures. You can do your flat darks ahead of time and store them for repeated use. So back to our sequence, we still have some time to go, about half an hour, and I'll come back then 
and we'll look at the first section which is using another instruction which is the sync wait and we're using it to do an initial autofocus run. One thing I should mention is that on the client side in regard to flat frame exposures if you look at the sequence it has a target schedule of flats in there as well just as in the server instance and it's immediately after a target scheduler sync wait. If you look at the server instance, it has the sync wait after its flats. So what is going to happen here is that the server will take its flats first, it will do hit the sync wait, and then the client will hit the sync wait and say, OK, it's my turn now, and it will now do its flats. And these flat exposures will also honor rotator angles as well, though it won't do any form of sync function, so it does expect your rotator to be accurate and repeatable. So let's go back to the server instance and wait for dusk. So we pick up the sequence and it is just passed through dusk and it's now slewing to an arbitrary alt azimuth. And it'll hit the first of two sync waits. This will queue up the other system to wait for this one to also be at the right point for it to run its autofocus. So it's hit the first sync wait and it's now doing autofocus. If I go to the client system, it too, if I just expand the right part of the sequence out, and just scroll down a bit. It's passed through its first sync wait and it's also running autofocus. And then when the two are finished, this sync wait will bring them back together again and it will go on to the next part of the imaging sequence, which is to actually take photographs. Before it does that, because in this generic sequence I don't know that the first target will be ready in time, it will first of all park the scope um, in a a holding pattern and then unpark and slew to the coordinates as required. So I'm going to go back to the server version and I'm going to return when it starts to park the scope and then we can see how the actual target sequencer starts to populate the target. So we rejoin the sequence and the scope is parking so I'm going to just collapse that and open up the main imaging part of the sequence. And once it's parked, it will then move on. Let's bring it up here. Scroll down a bit further. Image while safe. This is the one I want. So once it's parked, it will ascertain what the first target is and start doing its thing. So it's hit the sync weight, you saw it light up in green, and it's now populated the target with the first part of the spider nebula. And the server kicks off a slew center and rotate instruction to get lined up. The client will wait for this to complete and then it will also do a rotate instruction to, to make sure that the image is at the same angle. So this will just run through the classic built-in, take a picture, plate solve, work out the coordinate changes, work out the rotation angle and so forth. So I'm going to wait for this to complete and then it'll carry on. So when the telescope is now set up and pointing in the right spot. If we look at the client system, it is sitting there waiting for it to be told and it's now doing its own solve and rotate. But in contrast to the server system, if we scroll down here and look at the safe imaging conditions, it isn't populated with the target information. 
it's simply saying what it's doing which is rotating to a particular angle and solving so this will now have both rotators on the cameras to the same angle and it says requesting action from sync server because it is playing dumb and doesn't know what to do so on the server system what will be happening is it will be setting up the guider so if we scroll down further it's just started its first exposure after the guider has settled and if we go to the client system you'll see that it's now been populated with the first exposure instruction and this is just for information so it's an HA filter 300 seconds gain and offset and binning and this will continue to be updated each time it's told to take a particular exposure and on the other side the server side the instructions for slewing and switching filters and changing readout modes get populated in this window here and this can get quite long during um, a full night's imaging and there we have it when it gets to the end of being able to image this target which is just after about two o'clock it will then go to its next target and that target information will be populated in here and all the slew centering and rotating will be repeated for the second target and it'll carry on until dawn so in this particular case if we look at the loop structure this is a loop while safe if it's not safe it'll find shelter and just shut up shop and wait for safe conditions to return and in the outer loop if I just whisk that down a bit you'll see that the overall target loop structure has wait until nautical dawn and while targets remain tonight and just to remind ourselves back in the plugin if I look at the scheduler preview and hit run it's saying it'll do two lots of the spider nebula and it will then do M101 so there we have it I don't think the flats will run tonight because it won't reach its target exposure count so if we take a look at target management and look at my spider nebula which is down there it's quite a good way through if I hit refresh 200 out 320 no it won't it won't make it tonight but it might do on a subsequent night so there we have it thank you for watching